In this tutorial, we are going to create a 2D platformer in Godot. We'll cover the movement system, how to shoot bullets, and there will be interactive enemies. For this project, you should already know the basics of Godot. You don't need much, but you should know about scenes and basic nodes, signals, and how to write at least some code. If you struggle with these concepts, check out my introduction to Godot. That one should help a lot. But anyway, I want to create a new Godot project on my desktop. I'll call it Platformer. The renderer doesn't matter for this project, so I will use the default, Forward Plus. Here we are in Godot, and at the moment we have an entirely empty project, nothing is going on. If you look at the file system, we only have icon.svg. And to get started, we need a whole bunch of resources. Fortunately, in my case, I have one folder called Resources, and in there we have audio and graphic files. All of which I want to import, so simply drag and drop them into the editor, and then you have two folders. And well, you get what you would expect. For example, we have a couple of player images, we have a bunch of level tile sets, and so on. Nothing too complicated in there. We are simply importing a couple of audio files and a few graphics. After we have that, we have to figure out our scene setup. And I suppose we can start with the first one, which is going to be a 2D scene. Click on that, and then rename node 2D to level. Then I want to save the entire scene in a new folder. So create folder, and let's create a scenes folder. There, level.tsen, and now we have a scene. Now we can start working on the level itself, which is going to be created via a tile map, which is just going to be another node. So with the level node selected, click on Control A or on the plus symbol, and I want to add a tile map. This one at the moment doesn't really do anything, Although at the bottom, we are now getting a tile map. To actually see something in there, we have to go to the right in the inspector and create a tile set. If you click on empty and new tile set, you're getting a new tile set. Really important now though, click on this tile set again and let me extend the inspector just a bit so all of this is readable. You want to click on this tile set again because then you get a few more options. The really important ones are tile shape and tile size. In our case, if you look at the graphics and at the tile sets, there we have two tile sets, one for the decorations and one for the level. In fact, let's have a look at the file itself. You want to go to graphics, to level, tile sets, and then open level.tilemap. And this is a fairly small file, so you will have to zoom in a bit. On this graphic, we have a whole bunch of tiles. For example, this would be one tile, then we have another tile right next to it, then we have another tile, and so on. All of these tiles are 16 by 16 pixels large. Also, all of them are squares. And that is the shape we are defining in the inspector right now. If you look at the inspector, for the tile shape, we want to have a square, and for the tile size, we want to have 16 by 16. And this we want to set before we are actually using any of these graphics. If these numbers are wrong or don't align, you are going to have a ton of problems down the line. Be careful here. Anyway, in our case, we are fine with all of that, so I can minimize the tile set again. After that, and the inspector can be a bit smaller. At the bottom, you can now see a tile set and a tile map. Now, when you're working with a tile map in Godot, you are editing the tile map in tile sets and you are using it in tile map. The way that is working is you always start in the tile set. And there, first of all, you will need a new tile set source. So Godot right now is complaining that we have no tile set source selected. To create one, simply drag one file you want to use, and that has to be a tile map image. In my case, I want to use level underscore tile map. So simply drag it into the tiles list. And now Godot is asking us if we want to create tiles in this atlas texture. Most of the time, you want to say yes to that. And now, if you look at the graphic, we have split this tile set image into a whole bunch of tiles. So with that, we have a tile map and we could customize this. So for example, if you look under setup on the left, there we could set margin, separation, and a few more things. And if you click on paint and select the property editor, then we could, for example, define physics layers, navigation layers, and light layers as well. But for now, we don't really need any of that. Instead, I want to work inside of the tile map tab at the bottom. And in there, I can simply 
select one of these tiles and then start drawing inside of the level and create some kind of shape. Let me create a few and then we have one part of a level or what eventually will become a level, I suppose. What we can also do if I now run the current scene, you can see these graphics. So that is working just fine. Later on, we are going to create an actual level. Although for now, I want to use this basic graphic, which kind of works all the time to have some outline shape of the level. So let me draw over all of the stuff we have just created. Since we are changing this later on anyway, it's not too important. Although at this point, you could already create your own level. The way you would approach that, let's say I want to create a level or rather a platform with roughly this shape. You would have to arrange the graphics in such a way to get a proper looking thing. For example, you could pick this tile, then this tile, then all of the middle tiles, and then this endy bit and this other endy bit. And then if you click on this eraser button or the key E on your keyboard, you can delete tiles. To start drawing again, press on the eraser again, and then you can draw. For example, what you could be doing is pick another graphic for the flat land. And with that, you would have one proper platform. This kind of process you have to do for the entirety of the level. This can become a fairly labor intensive process, so do reserve some time for creating proper levels. But anyway, that is basically all we need for now. Although the one thing I want to do is rename the tile map to terrain. Next up, I want to create the player. For that, I will create a new scene. And since the player needs to collide with things, we have to create a character body 2D. Now, I hope at this point you have watched a basic introduction to Godot, or at the very least, you have some kind of idea of how the physics system works in Godot. Essentially, if I look at all of the nodes, node 2D, collision objects, and their physics bodies, there are three physics bodies that you really want to care about. We have a static body 2D, a character body 2D, and a rigid body 2D. Static body 2D is for static objects. They do have collisions, but they do not move, or at least they're not supposed to. Then we have rigid body 2D nodes, and those are objects that can move and have collisions, but they are supposed to be moved by physical forces. Basically a cannonball, that's a good way to think about it. Finally, we have a character body 2D. That is a physics object that can collide with things and is controlled via code. Hence, you could control it via user input, for example. And this is the one we want to use. Now at the moment, we are going to get an error that this node has no shape. Before we are going to fix that, I want to do another thing. For now, I simply want to add a sprite 2D to display something. For this sprite 2D, we are now going to need a texture. And this we are going to get from the player and I want to use the idle.png image. Simply drag that one in there. And now we can see the player, but this looks pretty bad. The reason why this is looking bad is that the graphic we are using is really, really small. I think if you have an over it, you can see it is 13 times 14 pixels. And we are scaling this thing up a lot at the moment. Because of that, it's looking really, really washed out. And this would not be usable for any kind of game. To fix that, we want to change the scaling behavior in Godot. You want to go to Project, Project Settings, and then scroll down until you find Textures. In there, you find a default texture filter. At the moment, this one is linear, but we want to have nearest. If we simply change that, we have a much better looking graphic, and this is actually usable. In fact, whenever you're making a project with pixel graphics, you always want to have the nearest texture filter. Otherwise, everything is going to look really washed out. Next up, I want to give this character body 2D a shape. For that, we will have to add another node, which is going to be called a collision shape 2D. You could also work with a polygon, but I don't think we really need that. For the shape in the inspector, I want to use a capsule shape 2D, and then scale it so that it basically fits the player mostly all right. I think that looks okay. Later on, when an enemy collides with, for example, the arm of the player or this part of the ear, it shouldn't trigger a collision. We are only going to trigger a collision if we're hitting this shape. So that is going to give us the basic outline of the player. Although, 
I want to be a bit better with the naming, so let's call this one the player, and then save the entire scene as player.tscn. Then we can go back to the level and attach the player to this level. I want to attach player.tscn in there, and then all the way in the top left, we have the player. And now I want to put the player in a start position. Let's put him right there. With that, we can also run the entire game. And now you can see that the player is just a little bit small. To fix that, we are going to need a camera, which we want to attach to the player, because that's what the camera is supposed to follow. Fortunately, a camera 2D is simply another node that we have to attach to the player. With that, we can go back to the level and run this one scene. And now we have a little bit of a change. The player is right in the center of the window. Before we had the camera, we started drawing the window somewhere up here, because this point is the origin point. And this used to be the top left of our window. But with a camera, we always centering the player, or whatever the camera is targeting. That's a good start, but we are still a bit zoomed out. To fix that, you want to set the zoom level of the camera. For example, if we set this to a 10, then we will definitely see the player. With that, run the level scene again. And there we can see the player. Although this is very, very close to the player. I think a better number here would be something like a 5. Let's try that one. So run the level scene again. And yeah, I think that looks better. But once again, these numbers are very subjective. So choose whatever you think is best. There's no universally right answer. Also, when you are using a camera, you always want to enable position smoothing. If you wouldn't do that, the camera is going to look really, really choppy, which just doesn't feel right. Basically, the camera will always drag a little bit behind the player. And with position smoothing, we are smoothing out the camera movement. Without that, the camera would simply jump around, which can look really bad. Once we have movement, we can work with the speed a bit more, but I think for now, simply enabling this is good enough. Righty, with that, we have a basic level. So if I run level again, we have a start. But what I really don't like right now is that we don't have a background. To fix that, I want to create another scene, which as a parent node simply needs to have a basic node, which I'm going to call game. And to this game, we're going to attach the level itself. With that, we can once again see what we have done earlier. But on top of that, to this game, we can now add another node, which is going to be a color rectangle. This color rectangle is going to be a UI node, meaning to position it, you want to use the symbols at the top, specifically the one on the left where we can set the ratio and we want to fill the entire window with this graphic. And at the moment, this node comes after the level node, so it's going to be drawn on top, which I don't want to do. It should be behind the level. Also, we want to change the color and I want to use the background of these tiles. So this beige color. To get that, click on the color and then use the color picker to get this color. And there we go. Now we should be having a background color. After that, I want to save the scene under game.tscn. And now if I run this one particular scene, this is going to work. So that doesn't look terrible. However, if I go back to the player and set the zoom level of the camera back to one and then try game again. Also, before we continue, the game node is going to be the most important one. So this is what I actually want to play when the game is starting. This one should be the default scene. To make that work, I want to click on the main play button and then select the current scene. And now you can see that we do have the player in one position and most of the background is covered in the proper color. But you can also see that we still have the ugly background color. To fix that, I basically want to tell this color rectangle to ignore the player camera and always be in this position. We are always going to have the same background color and this thing doesn't change. So if this one ignores the camera, we will never see the original editor background. And to make it ignore the camera, we're going to need another node, which is called a canvas layer. Whatever node you attach to this canvas layer will ignore the camera, which in our case is going to be the color rectangle and all of this should be behind the level. Also, I want to rename it to 
RPG. If I now run the entire game again, we can see that, well, we can only see the background. To fix that, you want to go to layer and then set the layer to negative one. Now we can see in the editor, we see the terrain again. And if I run all of this, we have a completely covered background, which is much nicer. After that, inside of the player, I want to reset the zoom level to five. And now if I run the game, this feels really good. So with that, we have a super basic setup. That's a really good start. And to finish up this video, let's do an exercise. I want you guys to create the basic B enemy. It is simply going to be an area to denote as the parent with an image and a collision shape. Also, the final scene should be added to the level. I think all of that is fairly straightforward. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out. Back in Godot, I want to create a new scene. The parent node for this one is going to be an area 2D, which I can rename right away to B. Also, let's save it in the same scenes folder that we have already used. So now we have a B scene. This B is going to need two things. First of all, I want to add a sprite 2D. The graphic for that one, you can find inside of enemies and there we have the B. Pick one of the two images, which one you choose really doesn't matter. I'm gonna go with 0.png. Add this one in there. And now we have an image of a B. After that, I want to add another node, which will be a collision shape 2D. For that, we will need an actual shape. Now for this one, we could use a circle shape 2D or a capsule shape. I think the capsule one is going to work just a bit better, but let's try. And I think that looks all right. Perfect. With that, we have the B. Next up, inside of the level, I want to attach one instance of this B, which we can do with the level selected. I want to add a child scene, which is going to be the B. And then this is going to add the B in the top left. I want to move the B a bit further down there. And now just to keep things a bit more organized, I want to add a node 2D which I will rename to enemies. And the B is going to live in this node 2D. That way later on, we don't have too many enemies inside of the main scene tree. Just feels a bit nicer to work with. But all right, with that, I can run all of this and we can see the player and the B. Neither does anything at the moment, but that we can work on next. Or, well, I suppose we can start with the input and the movement for the player.